This is the story of my mother-in-law hosted a weekly guest for French Chats. I secretly recorded their conversations. Let me introduce myself. I am Andrea, a simple housewife who thought she had the perfect family. However, I never knew that my family was filled with traitors. This is the story of how I was able to cut off a toxic person and save my children from being kidnapped. My husband Ian and I were having a great life. He had a very successful career and was earning a lot of money. I, on the other hand, was a humble housewife who was expecting a baby. My husband is a very kind and loving man and took great care of me. His caring nature is what made me fall in love with him. His family was also pretty sweet towards me and welcomed me with open arms. This is why it was so strange to me when his mother, Sophia, suddenly started to hate me. Initially, I could tell that the news of my pregnancy didn't sit well with her. I figured that she might be going through something and was projecting her annoyance at me. However, Sophia's behavior worsened when I declared that I was having twins. Oh my God, you are having twins. Please tell me they are boys, Andrea. Tell me now, Sophia said. Yes, Sophia, we are having twin boys. I knew it. I knew that my babies would come back to me. I am so happy. I have been waiting for so long. Finally, I will have them in my arms. Sophia's behavior and her words confused me. However, Ian was pretty patient with her and tried to deflect the topic. I decided to ignore her weird comments and wait for things to be clear. Well, after knowing everything, Sophia became even more obsessed with my pregnancy. She was always dictating to me about what to do and what not to do. It was frankly getting very annoying. When I refused to hear her advice, she said, Why are you being so stubborn, Andrea? You are a dumb girl and will end up hurting my children. You need to listen to me. I know what is best for them. Sophia, I know you want the best for us, but trust me, I'm not making mistakes. I have enough guidance from my doctor. We are all set. You don't have to worry. Don't act like you know everything. This just proves how unfit you are to be a mom. Thankfully, the kids will have their real mom once they are born. I can't wait to have them in my arms. Slowly, her behavior became highly alarming. I decided to talk to Ian away from Sophia's prying ears. So I asked Ian why Sophia kept calling our children hers. He sighed and signaled me to sit down. You don't know about this, but mom was pregnant with twins. It happened after I was born. Unfortunately, the twins didn't make it to the birth, Ian said. Oh my God, that is so sad. But why does she think our twins are hers? That makes no sense. Mom has some unresolved issues from that time, Andrea. She never got help to overcome her grief. We tried hard to put her into therapy, but mom just never listened to us. I'm trying to be patient with her. She went through something very traumatic, so I have been gentle with her. I understand, Ian. I will try to be gentle towards her as well. But if she doesn't get better, we might have to set some boundaries. Hearing Sophia's story broke my heart. My pregnancy hormones were high and I felt very emotional. So I decided to let her be, at least a part of my pregnancy. However, I soon learned that it wasn't enough for her. She wanted my children and she was adamant that they were meant to be hers. Her behavior got worse and Ian had to tell her to back off. Thankfully, she listened to us. Things got a little better after that. However, a few days before my delivery, Sophia showed up at the house. We were in the midst of a discussion about Ian's transfer to another city for his job. Sophia walked in and said, Ian told me he will be working from LA for a while. You will be all alone in this house. I bet it will be a major inconvenience. Yes, we were discussing what we can do. Ian has been contemplating leaving his job. That is ridiculous. You need his income, Andrea. You don't earn any, do you? Want to starve the children? Of course not, Mom. Why would you even say that? We are just concerned about her being alone right now. Well, I have a solution for you. I can move in and help you out, Andrea. That is if you two accept my help. I have raised Ian. I know everything about motherhood. Since Andrea's mom is far away, I can help her for now. Um, that is a good idea. I will be able to concentrate on work knowing all of you are safe. Andrea, what do you say? I think mom will be of great help. If she wants to take such a big responsibility, then I am fine with it. By then, it had been months since Sophia had made her weird comments. She was starting to follow our rules and boundaries, so I saw no harm in having her over. She did have the experience, and it would be a good thing to have her around at that time. I never knew that I was making a mistake. If I had known, I would have never allowed her in my house. Ian was with me when our sons were born. They were all very healthy and perfect in all ways. 
We were very proud parents and showed them off to everyone. Sophia was also very happy for us. She did insist on being in the delivery room, but we didn't allow that. Everything was going smoothly until Ian left for his new job. Sophia moved in a day before Ian was supposed to leave. She was acting very caring towards me and the kids, so I thought everything would be okay. However, she soon changed after Ian left. Sophia became obsessed with my children. Every time I held them, she said, You need to stop hugging my children. They need to be with me as well. Quit holding them for so long. You don't deserve to spend so much time with them. What are you talking about, Sophia? I need to hold my children. I'm feeding them right now. Not, you need to hand them over right now. I have the baby formula ready for their meal. There is no need for you to feed them. Sophia practically snatched them out of my arms. I was still recovering from postpartum medical problems and wasn't strong enough to deal with this. Sophia always did this when I was spending time with the kids. She did take good care of them, but rarely allowed me to spend time with them. When I got a little better, I started to push back and set some boundaries. However, nothing worked to keep Sophia at bay. I never told Ian what was happening. He was already stressed being away from us. Knowing Sophia was with us, he had some peace. If I complained about her or kicked her out, I knew he would leave his job and come back. We simply couldn't afford that right now. So I bought through the insults and abuse that she threw at me. Things got worse as the months passed. However, there was one thing that particularly bothered me. Sophia kept meeting up with a strange man at my house. She met him every week for a month. The most confusing part was that they always spoke in French, which I didn't know. Sophia was French, so she knew the language. When I asked her about him, she said, You don't need to butt your head into my business. I can invite whoever I want to this house. You are forgetting that this is my house, Sophia. You just cannot call anyone here on a whim. Shut up, Andrea. I'm a grown woman. I don't have to listen to you. He's my special friend and will be here anytime he pleases. Alarm bells went off in my head immediately. I had a very bad feeling about this man. So I decided to snoop in on their conversation. There was a security camera in the living room and all I had to do was access the footage. I didn't know French, but my best friend Marilyn did. I knew that she would get me the answers I wanted. I collected the footage and went over to Marilyn's house, taking the kids with me as well. I was afraid to leave them with Sophia. Marilyn welcomed me to her home and was generally worried about why I showed up randomly. I told her my situation and asked her to hear the recording. She agreed and listened to the entire thing. When she was done, she looked pretty horrified. She looked at me and said, Andrea, listen to me. You need to go home, pack your bags, and leave with your kids. Do it quickly. Why, Marilyn, what's wrong? What were Sophia and the man discussing? They were going to take your children away from you. Sophia planned to take the kids to France and keep them there. Your husband doesn't know about this, and she wants to do it before he comes back from the trip. Oh my God, are you serious? But how would she do that without my consent? That's what the man is for. He was making fake passports for Sophia and the kids. I think your mother-in-law is paying him for this job. He's already processed the documents. You need to get out fast. I'll go and collect my things, but I don't want Sophia to suspect anything. She's going to pay for thinking she can take my child. Will you help me, Marilyn? Of course I will. That's what friends are for. You can stay with your kids at my place. I have plenty of room for all of you. It's better than staying at the house right now. I hurried out of her house and went home as sneakily as possible. I collected our important stuff and went back to Marilyn's place. The kids were with her the whole time. When night fell and Sophia saw us missing, she called me and said, where the hell are you, Andrea? It's almost eight at night. How can you be so irresponsible? Where are the kids? They shouldn't be out right now. Stop shouting at me, Sophia. The kids and I are having a sleepover at my friend's house. We won't be home today. What? No. Who said you can take the kids for a sleepover? I didn't permit you. Give me your address so that I can bring back the kids. I don't need your permission, Sophia. I'm their mother, not you. I can take them wherever I want. You need to remember that. Don't be so full of yourself, Andrea. I will have my time. You won't be able to control the kids for long. Hey, pause for a moment. Would you care to support us? Like this video and subscribe for more. Now let's dive back into the story. She said that and hung up on me. I could tell that she was fuming. Thankfully, she didn't know Marilyn's address, so she didn't have the means to show up at the house. 
After months of being restless, I was finally feeling peaceful. Marilyn was a great supporter and truly came through for me. When the kids went to bed, I received a call from Ian. He said, Andrea, mom called me a while ago. She said you took the kids and went somewhere. She's worried sick. What is going on? I was about to call you, Ian. Relax, I'm at a friend's house. I told Sophia the same thing, but she's mad at me for taking the kids. She is pretty mad at you, Andrea. Can't you just tell her when you will be staying out? I'm not a child, Ian. Plus, these are my kids. I don't have to take her permission on what I do with my children. You're being ridiculous. Look, you don't need her permission, but try to be a little amicable with her. At that point, I knew that Ian needed to see the true face of Sophia. So far, I have been simply contemplating if I want to punish Sophia. However, I realized that she would be in our lives if I didn't take the necessary actions. So I said, Ian, look, there is something we need to talk about. This is very important. You need to come home. What is it, Andrea? You sound stressed. Are the kids okay? Are you all right? Yes, we are fine, but something is going on here. I can't tell you when you are not here. Can you please come as soon as possible? All right, I'll take a flight tomorrow. Will that be fine? Yes, please hurry. Also, don't tell Sophia that you are coming back. This is about her, and I don't want her to know I called you. All right, I won't tell her. Please be safe. I will be there soon. I was finally feeling relieved that Ian took my concerns seriously. However, I was still super panicked. I couldn't sleep at night out of anger and anxiety. Every time I closed my eyes, I thought Sophia would come and take away my kids, so I held them and stayed with them throughout the night. The next morning, Ian called me after he got off his flight. I gave him Marilyn's address and told him to come ASAP. When he arrived, Ian hugged me. He also called the kids and spent some time with them. After a while, Marilyn arrived and we knew it was time to talk. Ian, I know this was very sudden, but I needed you to come home. I'm going to stay at Marilyn's place for a while, I said. What happened, Andrea? Why didn't you come home? It's because of your mother, Ian. She's been planning to take the kids away from us. What are you saying? I don't understand. For the last month, a strange man has been visiting our house almost every day. Sophia simply said that he was a friend of hers. They always talked in French, and I didn't understand what they said. I got suspicious of them, so I recorded that conversation. Marilyn here told me what they had been planning. That's right. The man kept saying that he had the fake passports prepared, and he said she would take your kids and move to France so that she could raise them without you two, Marilyn said. That's not possible. She is my mom. Why would she do this? I don't believe it. The recordings are still with me, Ian. I guess she forgot that we have a security camera in the living room. Here. See it. You understand, so it won't be hard for you to know what they are saying, I said, showing Ian the footage. He simply looked at me with uncertainty. However, after he saw the footage, Ian grew extremely angry. Marilyn is right, Andrea. Mom was planning to take our kids to France. Hell, she even told her family back there about her plans. They think you are a horrible mother and that she is doing this to protect the kids, Ian said. That sounds just like her. All these months were hell living with her. She always made it clear that she deserves our kids more. We were stupid enough to have her around. I am so sorry, Andrea. I let mom stay because I thought she would help you. I had no idea she would become like this. Don't say sorry, Ian. It's time we teach her a valuable lesson. We cannot let her get away with this. You are right. Have you thought about anything? I told him my entire plan. We would go to the police. We also planned to confront Sophia in our house. The plan was to make her confess to everything and catch it on a security camera. We would go for a restraining order against her. Also, we planned to turn her in for the forgery of passports. We wouldn't leave her friend out as well. They were both going down. After we hatched out our plan, we went straight to the police. Marilyn also accompanied us there. We submitted the previous recordings and promised to bring more evidence. The police also said that they would follow us to the house when we confronted Sophia. So we all proceeded towards the house. Our kids stayed at my aunt's place, close to the police station. We asked the police officers to stay outside while we confronted Sophia. We would call them in if required. Ian and I walked into the house and spotted both Sophia and the stranger. They looked like deer in headlights. Ian, what are you doing here? Why didn't you tell me you were coming? Sophia said. Who is this guy, Mom? What is he doing in my house? Ian asked. 
Oh, he is just a friend. He was just leaving. You know, we catch up on our lives from time to time, Sophia said. The guy just waved to us nervously and laughed. We let him go because we knew the police would nab him just out of the house. With the man gone, we turned to Sophia. So, Sophia, is there anything you want to tell us? I said. Tell you what, Andrea, you need to answer me about where you took my kids. It's been a day since I saw them, Sophia said. The good news is you will never see them again. We know all about your plans, Sophia. You thought you could just get away with it. You have some explaining to do, Mom, Ian said. Were you going to take our children away? Why would you even plan something like that? I don't know what you are talking about, Ian. Andrea has been lying to you. She just wants to keep me away from my babies, Sophia said. You are the one who is lying, Sophia. We have your conversation with the guy in our CCTV footage. We know what you have been planning. There is no point in lying anymore, Ian said. Fine, yes, I'm going to take my children. They were meant to be mine. Andrea only carried them because I am too old. They are my lost twins. They deserve to be with me. They are our children, Sophia said. Sophia, you are absolutely insane and need help. Your game is up, Sophia. We are done with you. We won't allow you around our kids again, I said. Yes, you will never have a relationship with them or us. You need to leave. The police are waiting for you outside. I hope you finally come to your senses and get some help, Ian said. No, you can't keep me away from my babies. I won't allow this. I will take them away, Sophia said. At this point, Sophia was behaving erratically and was almost aggressive towards us. So Ian went and called the police while I tried to calm her down. She lunged at me and hit me in the face. Of course, the cops saw everything. In the aftermath of the incident, we were able to get an emergency protection order against Sophia. We also applied for a restraining order and were approved for it. Sophia tried her best to convince the judge that her delusions were true. Thankfully, the judge never listened to her. She was banned from seeing the kids and ordered to go through a psychiatric evaluation. Sophia didn't like that at all. She had to be put in a psych ward. As for us, we decided to go permanently no contact with Sophia. She was never to have a relationship with us or the children. Ian contacted his aunt, who then took over the care of Sophia. Ian was adamant that we would never support Sophia financially again. He was done with her and wanted to protect his family. Ian and I also decided to relocate near Ian's job. It would allow us to be close and stay away from Sophia at all costs. In the end, Sophia and the stranger were both put on trial for their criminal activities, and Sophia lost the rights to her grandchildren. On the other hand, my family and I are thriving and doing better every day. After experiencing the full journey of our story, we'd love to hear your thoughts. How did the story resonate with you? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay blessed. Thank you for watching and see you in the next story.